All right, ladies and gents, thank you again for joining me on Tux Tech TV. This is Eric J bringing you another tutorial on how to install the uh, Exo drivers and actually get it um, running well and um, hopefully those will help to avoid some of the issues that you were having with the um, ways that you were doing it previously. This way should make it simpler and more stable. So stay tuned. This is Tux Tech TV and I'm Eric J here to help. Alright, for starters, what I'm going to do is um, show you real quick on the camera. I just purchased this keyboard right here. Um, it works well and um, it uses the uh, solar application that you could install. I'll show you guys how to do that in a later video. But um, once you launch it, it actually show you how much uh, battery life you have left and if you have additional um, Logitech devices that has the support for the um, connector that uh, the USB adapter that goes into the PC it unifies all those devices the multiple devices into this one application to show you battery life status and everything for those devices um, seems to be working like a champ right now in the, um, Linux so that'll be a later review and um, it's gonna be short and sweet so yeah later on I'll show you guys about that and how to install it but anyway for starters we're here about the um, XOR drivers for Linux so every time I wander off onto my second screen you're gonna see this um, terminal go dark for a second so yeah I'm gonna real quick <coughs> copy and paste so I'm not doing a whole bunch of typing each script um, these scripts I'm actually going to put in the description below so that everybody could um, uh, have the uh, actual script there because you could easily leave out a punctuation and it'll uh, give you a, a, an error when you try to run it so yeah in the description below in the YouTube videos it'll all have these posted so very down there copy and paste them into your terminal like I'm showing you here and um, once you do that you press enter and it'll ask you for your password. You go ahead and type in your password. Oh. Once you type in your password correctly, this is what would transpire. And then you press enter again. And it'll go on to your onto the web and find a script. Put it into your um, repository and uh, you go from there. And then after you do that, you're going to do a sudo apt-get update. sudo apt-get update, copy and paste it. And once you paste it here, um, you could do that and then... Ah, what did I do? And then right after that you're going to do a sudo apt whoops why am I so clumsy today maybe it's because it's a new keyboard and I'm trying to get used to it haha <laughs> good excuse right anyway and um, you're going to do a dist which is short for distribution upgrade so after you do that and you press enter, I already did this in my system, so I'm not going to do that again. Um, but once you do all that and your system runs through the update first, after it's done with the update, it's going to put a prompt for the upgrade. Just go ahead and hit yes or type Y enter. And then after that, after that you're gonna do the um, you actually have to install aptitude uh, what aptitude does is that 
um, if you want to search to see what the latest driver is for whatever graphics card you have um, you could use aptitude to actually search the uh, World Wide Web probably haven't heard that phrase used in a long time <laughs> so you're gonna search the web or the uh, awesome Linux system is going to search the web after you install aptitude um, I already have that in my system so I'm just going to go ahead and show you um, what transpires when you do the aptitude search so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that right now to show you guys what happens I'm sorry if this is um, a little bit of a quirky tutorial but <laughs> I'm doing my best here to you know simplify things for newer users and um, you know this is the best way that I see that I could do that for you guys so yeah when you do an aptitude search here it's gonna read all the packages in your system and then this will pop up and when that pops up you scroll back to the top well, not that far and it'll bring up a list of you know all the um, current most current from the oldest actually from the uh, NVIDIA 173 driver scroll down here and it comes up to the uh, NVIDIA 3.4 346, 343, and 340. What I'm running currently is actually the uh, NVIDIA 343. After maybe about two or three months, after posting my, for posting my first video, I was running into some, some graphical issues where I would have a lot of screen tearing watching videos, and that was a problem I was trying to avoid. So I actually had to um, downgrade from the... Uh, 346 driver to the um, 343 um, having a lot more stability using that and to prove that's what I'm using I'm gonna go ahead and open my settings so you can see it's a 343.36 driver and um, that's what I'm running and I'm not having any screen tearing with my video you see here in the corner I'm not seeing it here but on YouTube you might see it on your end but I am not seeing any screen tearing at all with my GeoVC um, camera recording in the corner right here so yeah um, after this right here uh, these are the most stable drivers that you could actually install the 331, 340 and the 343 are the actual most stable drivers that they have available so you could go ahead and start from the top down and um, see where the, the uh, most stability lies and I highly recommend running at least a uh, 1080p video um, and uh, to push your graphical your graphics acceleration to um, its limit what I've done is um, I've opened both browsers um, the uh, Firefox and the Google Chrome browser at the same time because both of them have GPU acceleration just to see how far I could push the um, that uh, OpenGL code and um, I've done it <laughs> and it runs well so yeah it does use a lot of the system memory as you can see right now for some reason well that's my CPU is actually a 46 percent um, well I'm doing a 1080, uh, not 1080, uh, 720p recording on my webcam and the GeoVC recorder. And I'm also doing the desktop recording, you know, while doing this tutorial. So that's why my CPU is running, um, I don't, you know, almost at 50%. But anyway, back to the remainder of the tutorial here. I kind of went off on a tangent. I apologize. Um, after you do all that then the point that you come to when you uh, locate the driver that you wish to install I'm gonna go ahead and copy and then paste
place the the command so that you could actually get your driver installed um, I have a copy of the uh, the uh, 340 driver here but you could also change it to whatever driver you want so you know you could switch it to the 343 or you know uh, the 346 if you want to be bold and um, the reason why I in, in included this um, NVIDIA settings portion at the beside installing the drivers that um, in some cases if you just install a driver it'll install the settings but it's using the settings from the uh, oldest driver install uh, how should I say the older settings application that actually runs with the driver so when you actually do that it you know that that includes graphical bugs too so you want to just go ahead and do the driver and the settings install at the same time so that you could you know have all up to date and current um, software running I don't know if I'm making sense to you probably not but go ahead and do it <laughs> um, and after you're done doing that you go ahead and you press enter and it'll install all the drivers and stuff I'm not gonna do that currently again because I'm doing the recording and the tutorial so it might uh, drawing some kind of graphical issue so after you do that in the terminal you go ahead and press enter and then you do a restart on your system and then after your system have restarted you will have the current driver and you will have the current settings um, you could go into the after um, installing both of the uh, software programs there you will your settings should look like this if after you do the restart and your settings is having an issue and it's not showing you the uh, the XORG server or the this this actual setting right here is because the um, XORG driver didn't update correctly so um, you know usually you you do another system update and then you go back and do a purge on the Nvidia driver and then <laughs> reinstall it yes you do have to run through those things over and over again to get it installed correctly sometimes if you actually have um, what you call it a uh, AMD processor running whatever chipset it is I have an, an ASUS motherboard um, I kind of run ran into a little bit of a an issue with the uh, restart so I had to purge my driver and reinstall it again so like I said if you actually have an issue with the driver here um, it'll show in the settings so you probably won't have this X server display configuration so if you don't see this it wasn't installed properly so you will have to do a purge and a reinstall again and um, yeah that should convene with the uh, tutorial and um, yeah that should be it so after you guys are finished with that you know just um, test your system out see how far you could push it and um, go from there but you know I think after being gone for so long I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys an added bonus as far as uh, something that you could actually run on your your system here so what I'm gonna do for you guys is you know, let me go ahead and close this up I'm going to show you what bonus that is in one second here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and close what I have running on the side over here. Let's see if my CPU CPU is still running at forty something percent, but eh, it'll be okay. Anyway, that added bonus I have for you guys is going to be <laughs> not any of the stuff I have here active actually. All right, let me go here and um, go into one of my secondary drives here. And the bonus is going to be actually running the uh, Unity benchmark. So, yeah. I think I already have, yeah, I already transferred the uh, 
the uh, file over into my home folder so in your home folder you want to do a download on the uh, unity haven benchmark and uh, yeah I seem to be I see I, I always run into an issue running it when I use the um, Nautilus um, the Nautilus file file um, program here when I try to run it it always has an issue uh, and it tries to compile the file or run it in um, a fashion that I don't want it to so what I had to do is install the uh, Nemo file system so I'm gonna have to do it this way open my Nemo file file browser here and as you can see I'm gonna show you guys the issue that I run into and um, if there's anybody out there that could help me fix that issue in Nautilus let me know please in a comment so as you can see here when I try to run the file in Nautilus it opens with um, gedit I don't want it to open with gedit because what that does when you actually run it it's a slow and arduous process and I don't want to sit here and wait for the system to compile this and then I actually sat and waited for like 40 minutes and then it compiled it and then I ran the program and nothing so if there's something I did wrong with that let me know but anyway running it using Nautilus you know you first of all you have to go to properties and make sure that in permissions that the uh, execution is ticked off if this box is unticked it's not gonna function it's not gonna do anything that's what's gonna come up it's gonna try to run it in gedit and when it's running in gedit it takes a long time so cancel that go ahead and cancel that get out of here yeah see and I was having that little bug that issue that I was talking about if you see it's like blanking out yeah you keep pressing that X button <laughs> it's so slow in actually executing the, the uh, cancellation that you know you have to keep pressing that X button and you keep doing that then what will happen is that you will get a pop-up that will ask you if you want to force it to quit and then go ahead and force it but anyway back to Nemo Nemo is an awesome files file browser so I I kinda use that on the side when I want to execute certain files and um, let me get rid of this here so we're using Nemo currently and keep Nemo even shows you the status of whatever drive you're running out of um this 500 gigabyte drive right here it's showing me that I have 63 gigs of free space left so that's awesome right there using Nemo um, I don't know why I just don't go ahead and just delete Nautilus but I may just go ahead and do that if I can't get it fixed I'll go ahead and delete it but anyway back to Nemo again right click here open and then it'll ask you how you want to run it but when you're actually running a benchmark you want to go ahead and run it in terminal first and it's gonna do you know basically what gedit was trying to do and um, it's gonna open that file up and then give you a new folder up here so you'll see this folder pop up and then you go to the haven icon that you see in the folder and then you're gonna double click and run and there you go you have the Haven benchmark running on Linux uh, and it's awesome 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 so yeah there you guys go Haven benchmark running natively and I showed you guys how to do it easy breezy thank you have a good one peace out